Good morning, dear students. I hope that you are doing well. Today we're going to uh, study chapter six, which includes the topic of words and pieces of words. This chapter, if you see, that looks at the problems encountered in identifying and defining the notion of the word. It then discusses the identification and description of morphemes, which is meant here pieces of words. And then it looks at the way in which the words can be assigned to word classes, which uh, here it is means the parts of a speech. We need to know what is the word. Here it is, the word appears to be a widespread concept. Even in a primitive cultures, informants are often able to identify words. This is somehow surprising because nobody has yet proposed a satisfactory universal definition of the notion of the uh, word here it is if you notice that nobody has yet proposed a satisfactory universal definition uh, for the uh, uh, word and even the word appears to be a widespread concept but yet it is a very difficult and a challenging task to give a definition for the uh, word why it is difficult to have a certain definition for the uh, word simply if you notice that uh, there are different people who wrongly assume that a word is irrecognizable because it represents a single piece of meaning this is a very significant question that needs to be answered does the word really represent a single piece of meaning this i mean that this assumption is wrong and how it is wrong simply because the word is recognizable because it represents a single piece of meaning but it can be easily shown how it is or how this view is wrong by looking at the lack of the correspondence between one word and the other let's take the example in arabic uh, which is uh, in uh, surat hud uh, I, uh, uh, 28 ayat 23 which says that and then the translation of this word and that we have just word then notice the translation of this word takes seven words as equivalent in English shall we compel you to accept it and then if we notice that between the uh, the French word and the English one here it is uh, 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 as equivalent to uh, number 90. Even in English, a word such as a played includes at least two pieces of meaning, play and past tense. Then we need to uh, have uh, a word definition. After that, the word definition, as we said, that it is a quite challenging task, but yet we need to see how uh, Bloomfield defined uh, the uh, the word as a minimum of three morphemes. The best known definition of a word is that proposed by the American linguist Bloomfield, who defined the word as a minimum of three morph uh, form. And then we need to know what is that. That is the smallest form that can occur by itself. But why this definition is practically insatisfactory? Again, because Bloomfield's definition works best written English where we conventionally leave a space on the other side and you know very well that the linguists are basically and primarily concerned with the spoken word not the written one and the two don't necessarily coincide for example it seems to be purely accidental that the name of a certain type of a snake for example we have a uh, constrictor is written as a two words rather than one and we do have a word seaside appears to as one word but seashore as uh, two so we need to know why have linguists find f find it so difficult to give a satisfactory and an acceptable definition of, for the notion of the word because here it is the answer seems to be that there are different types of words different types of words if you notice that here it is linguists pay more attention to the spoken words 
rather than the written ones but uh, we as we said that there are different types of uh, words consider the, the rhyme here it is a flea and a fly in a flu were imprisoned so that could they do said the flea let's a fly said the fly let's a flea so they flow through a flaw in the flu here it is if we count the number of these words then we're gonna have 36 written words though some of them are repeated and then uh, here it is the questions that should be raised after that the uh, the the the, the, uh, the rhyme of this word there are so many uh, repeated words in this uh, uh, here it is a literary uh, text so the questions that should be raised in here uh, for example we do have uh, for instance some of these words are repeated but if we decide to leave out the repeats and count the number of different words in a technical terms count the word types instead of a word tokens we come up against several problems and several questions should a fly noun and a fly verb be counted as the same since they sound the same or as different because they have different meanings and then the other question should a fly and flow be regarded as the same because they belong to the same verb or as a different because they have different forms all these questions are in need of answers and in order to solve these problems we need to see that it's important to distinguish between three types of words as we have different types of word okay for example the lexical items the syntactic words and the phonological words what do we mean by the lexical item the technical term for dictionary entry then the sound sequence fly represents two words since most dictionaries have a separate entries for fly as a noun and as a verb fly as a noun an insect with the two wings and a fly as a verb to move through the air in a controlled manner and then we do have the chunks uh, but, but, but before uh, sorry before that uh, let's see w what is meant by the uh, the other point the syntactic items or the syntactic words this is perhaps that the most basic and the most abstract use of the word word however both of these lexical items have various syntactic forms associated with them the insect could occur as a fly singular or flies as a plural and the verb could occur as fly or flying or flies or flow or fly, flown you know very well that there are five forms for the every single verb in english okay we may have it as a basic one here it is as a fly or the progressive form okay as a flying or third person singular flies or we may have it in the past flew or we may have it with the past participle had a flown okay so if we counted the various syntactic forms as a different words then the overall number of this word and uh, i mean that uh, uh, th their types would be much higher uh, than uh, ever okay after that we need to see what is meant by the phonological words or the phonological items a further complication occurs uh, with the lexical items such as law this has the two um, syntactic forms of flow singular and flaws plural but the singular form flow then has two different sound sequences associated with it flow before a consonant and a floor before a vowel and we do have uh, several uh, examples uh, if you uh, notice them for example we do have uh, that in terms of the lexical items syntactic words and the phonological one it, notice here it is we have the difference between the flow and the floor the flu had a flaw which allowed the fly to escape there was a floor in the flu there was a floor in the flu simply because it was followed by or it, it preceded 
uh, one of the vowels of n. Okay, and then this example shows that the mo uh, that we must not expect the exact overlap between the different types of uh, words. This is not confined to uh, English, but it happened and it occurs in other uh, languages as well. So we need to come up with the with the with the concluding remarks in terms of uh, the definition. These examples, as I said, that we must not expect an exact overlap between different types of words, and in some other languages, the situation is far more complex than uh, in English, like in Latin, like in French, and uh, and and in Welsh as well. So all in all, the word is difficult. To define because there are different kinds of word as I said from the syntactic lexical and phonological uh, perspectives uh, we need to come up with the with the uh, uh, ident identifying of words I mean that the words identification how can we uh, identify or consider this chunk as a word it's important to identify these various types of word there are two main stages in the analysis so we need to know what are these uh, stages the first one finding chunks such as uh, a fly flu which uh, recur as self-contained units second i mean that the second stage deciding how many lexical items are covered by each chunk as with the fly which covers two lexical items and conversely, deciding how many different chunks belong to the same lexical item, as with the fly flow, where different syntactic forms belong to one lexical uh, item. Then uh, we need to, to, to review for the first stage, finding chunks which behave as a self-contained unit. We look for sequences which are uninterruptible and mobile. These are useful guidelines in many languages, like in English. A sequence such as chickens cannot be interrupted. I mean that the word of chickens cannot be interrupted. We wouldn't be able to say that chick and then ends. Okay. In addition, the sequence chickens can move about as well. It can occur next to a different words and in many different parts of a sentence. As in chickens lay eggs. Foxes eat chickens. The chickens clucked loudly and someone if you notice that here it is at the beginning of the sentence and then at the end of the sentence and uh, sorry at the end of this sentence and then in the middle of the uh, sentence okay so it can move uh, about uh, in terms of these chunks as we said they are uninterruptible and mobile are likely to be asymptotic words for the second stage of the analysis we need to consider the syntactic behavior of these possible words. That is, I mean that the, these, uh, the syntactic behavior of the possible words, that is their rule in the overall sentence pattern. For example, fly as a noun would show up as behaving differently fr from fly as a verb, since each would fit into a different slot in these uh, sentences. The fly buzzed, birds fly. Here it is in the first sentence that we have them as, we have fly as a noun, while in the second one we have it as a uh, verb. On the other hand, a fly and a flow would turn out to be somewhat similar and that they would fit into the same general slot. They fly home on Sunday and they flow home on Sunday. But here it is, the syntactic behavior of these two different forms can be supplemented by analysis of their makeup. And in the other words, the morphemes out of which they are constituted. Let's therefore consider some of the facets of morphology next lecture. Thank you so much. Any questions, please feel free to send them.